So guys, today we are going to be doing a review of the Seiko SNK803. And before we get into this, as always guys, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more awesome content like this. So guys, like I said on this chilly day and me being sick, we are going to be doing a review on this sweet little field watch. Hopefully you guys uh, like the... Uh, backdrop and table props here uh, I'm definitely loving them myself and <clears throat> hopefully this crowd or hopefully this table isn't too crowded with leaves because uh, they're all coming off trees real fast anyways guys uh, like I was saying this is the watch and this is the SNK 803 they have multiple different SNK 80 numbers like the 805 the 8 <clears throat> different numbers and those 803 through like 805 and stuff like that basically designate the color of the straps and the color of the not so much the case but this kind of inside area here hopefully you guys can see how the inside in and of itself like the inside of the watch is tan and so on other watches there will be a, like a blue version that will have like a navy blue strap and then like a navy blue inside and then there's like one with a forest green and one with a black and so there's a whole bunch of different colors of this but I prefer the 803 because of course tan and it kind of matches some of my other tan apparel you guys have seen throughout the uh, EDC rotation but overall um, <clears throat> That's what the 803 is, but regardless to what 80 number you get, they're all basically the same as this one here. And so, first off, of course, these are automatic watches, and so that means that they do not use any batteries to power them, and that potentially they will die if you just put it like in a dresser drawer or whatever and you leave it unattended for some time. It would die because it needs to be moved around like this. But throughout daily operation, it will work pretty much indefinitely so long as you continue to tune it every how many ever years you need to to keep its accuracy set and to keep the uh, cogs going inside the watch itself. So other than that, it's a pretty basic watch. It's functions, which hopefully you guys can see the face of this watch good. I know the reflection of the like dreary day is also kind of beating down on the glass, but hopefully you guys can see the functions. This is a pretty simple watch, and that is one of the primary reasons I was led to get it. Uh, I really, I'm migrating from a Timex Expedition Sierra, which had a date function. It had, of course, your hour, minute, second hands, but it also had chronograph hands and so the watch face in and of itself was really busy and being that that was my first watch I didn't really know what to expect that I would really want out of a wrist watch but I ended up not really needing or liking those chronograph features not to say that they're bad features because I'm sure there are some people who would actually get use out of them but I myself really didn't like the chronograph features so I wanted to actually cut them out uh, in favor for a smaller body watch and actually what I really liked about the Seiko SNK 8 series is that it gave me exactly what I wanted and that was taking away all the uh, chronograph features but giving a day and a date feature so as you guys can see today or hopefully you guys can see I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see but it says the Tuesday the 19th and so I really enjoyed that whereas on my other watch it would just say the 19th this actually says Tuesday and so it makes it a little bit easier to clarify um, what day it is exactly so that is a nice feature <clears throat> so aside from that uh, that is or so those are the features another set of features that this watch has and I can't really show because obviously it's daytime but this watch does have illumination it is not tritium illumination so it's not like super super powerful but it does have some loom functionality to it and the illumination functions on this and I'll give a close-up here so that you guys will be able to see so there you guys go finally got it zoomed in but so the illumination features as you guys can see hopefully 
are the second hand. On the second hand, this piece, the opposite of the side it's pointing to, uh, this little kind of like circle here illuminates, and then of course your hour and your hand illuminate, or sorry, your hour, <laughs> your hour and minute hand illuminate, and then um, at each five minute increment or hour increment, um, it illuminates as well. So this watch, when illuminated properly, is actually pretty bright in the way that it shows off quite a bit of stuff and so you'll be able to see like I said every five minute slash hour increment and then your hour and minute hand and second hand illuminated so it definitely shows off a lot it definitely shows off a lot and I really like that ability now of course unfortunately the date the day date is not illuminated at all so that's not illuminated so just take that into account that's pretty much the features. This watch, while pretty small as you guys can see, is actually pretty packed with really useful features that are not super complicated. And I think that's one of my primary draws to this watch is not just its price point, which is around $70 to $50, <clears throat> primarily depending on what color you want, uh, but not just that price point, but also the amount of features that are packed into this watch that are really super useful for daily functions. I mean, once again, in a day-to-day -day situation, I'm going to be running something like my Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. So this has all my <clears throat> like abilities for chronograph, stopwatch, time. If I really want those things, I'll just, in all honesty, use this thing. And so what I found by having a wristwatch that had a chronograph function while it was a righteous feature I just ended up never using it so that's kind of one of the reasons why I wanted to in my next watch not have chronograph features because they just took up extra space and crowded the functionality or just the overall look of the watch face so as far as durability goes, as you guys can see, I've had this thing since around May-ish, and so it's been holding up pretty well. The strap is definitely, on both sides, really dirty. Uh, this was a lighter tan, kind of, <clears throat> or this was definitely a lighter tan, and in areas it's still definitely lighter, but in other areas it's definitely more dirty and dark. But as far as the strap goes, it holds up exactly how you'd expect a nylon webbing strap to hold up, which is just just fine. The eyelet, which I pretty much only religiously use, this second one here is holding up pretty fine. There's a little bit of fraying in the uh, nylon fabric, but it has this leather reinforcement over the holes to prevent the holes from ripping out or ripping into each other, which has been a really nice feature. So <clears throat> that's as far as the strap durability. As far as the overall durability of the watch face and everything goes, I have not had any issues with it. It is a stainless steel uh, watch body and it definitely has a few scratches in it. It's a stone wash for the most part. So I can see that there's definitely a few scratches in the uh, body of this watch, but they're all really superficial. Nothing that is particularly deep except maybe one or two scratches. Aside from that, it is, of course, not a sapphire, but a tempered glass uh, front, and for the most part, I think there are a couple scratches. Yeah, there's just a couple scratches right here. Uh, I, unlike Nut and Fancy, do not put any protectors on the watch face, and that's because, especially with a watch like this, it's not terribly expensive, so I'm not super worried if anything really bad ever did happen to it. And in the same, <laughs> and in the same vein, uh, I don't really see the scratches affecting functionality. I can still easily read, and once again, with all these scratches, I can see them, but I actually have to get the glass in the right spot to see it. So it's such a minimalistic thing that for me, I'm not really that concerned. So I don't have any protectors, screen protectors on this piece in particular, but the glass has been very, very durable and reasonably scratch resist. And of course, not a glass is not going to be as scratch resistant as hardened steel or something like that, but it's still pretty scratch resistant.
most part durability has been pretty outstanding uh, the back does have a show on it or a show side so you guys can see the inner workings hopefully if the glare doesn't kill you uh, you can see the inner workings of the glass and I want to note that this is not a waterproof watch it says it's water resistant but I have got it soaked and submerged multiple times never diving with it I don't really think especially due to this show back that it's really a diveable watch it certainly doesn't say it is <coughs> However, if you accidentally go swimming and leave this on, as long as you're not in the water too long, I don't think you would have an issue because that's basically what's happened to me in the past. And like I said, it's been submerged for short periods of time, but always taken back out. And I've never had any issues with water building up anywhere in this. And I'm not all sure how bad water would be if it got into these mechanisms, but probably would not be good. <laughs> But anyways, so as far as the water resistance goes, I found it more than adequate. Uh, if you're out on a rainy day, you don't have to like shield this watch from the water or anything like that. It'll hold up just fine. Other things I do enjoy about this watch are unlike uh, the other watch, the Timex I had, that had really um, obtrusive crowns this one only has one crown and it's very unobtrusive you guys can see that it just barely sticks out and i like that because i tend to wear paracord bracelets as you guys can see a lot with or on my watch side and so on the timex it would accidentally because the uh, crowns are so protruded that if I was wearing a bracelet on this side, the crown side of the uh, watch, it would accidentally hit and could accidentally start or stop um, the what is it, chronograph functions of that watch. So I really like how this one is not only angled offset, but it is very shrouded. And they have a little cutout here in the back so that you can pull this out. It has two different settings, one for minute, moving the minute hand around, and then the other one for moving the date around. So not too complicated, but just enough complicated. <laughs> so Anyways, my overall experience with this watch has been very favorable. I've really enjoyed wearing it every single day for the past few months now, and it makes an excellent watch that's really affordable, but gives you still a lot of practical functionality. It gives you a lot of pro ah, practical functionality. And as far as the time goes, as far as like how far it lags back, I've not found it to be particularly horrible. I find it, it this one in particular is a little bit fast. So it's about two minutes fast every month. So you just adjust it back a few minutes every month and that pretty much works for me at least. So as far as accuracy goes, it's not really been an issue. A lot of people when you say or when it's on paper, when it says like two minutes slow a minute, or sorry, <laughs> two minutes slow a month, a lot of people are like shocked. But when you actually end up living with it, it's not as bad as you would really think. And I don't really notice it that much. And once again, it's a very easy thing to correct. So anyways, I've really enjoyed running this watch for the past few months. It's been very tough, very durable. I've taken it on a lot of adventures. It has certainly not been a safe queen and uh, it's held up very admirably and I'm really impressed with it, especially for its price being considered. Anyways guys, or Anyways guys, that is basically all I have to say on this watch and hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. As always guys, God bless and I'm out.